What life inside the SpaceX Starship will be like? Let's discuss living inside the SpaceX Starship. So far, for only real-world conceptions of spacecraft have primarily been a succession of crew capsules with a rocket engine like Apollo, Soyuz, and a little pointed box like the Dragon tied to than an actual ship. The Starship spaceship and super-heavy rocket, commonly known as Starship, are fully reusable transportation systems designed to take personnel and cargo to Earth orbit. The moon Moon, Mars, and beyond. The Starship will be the world's most powerful launch vehicle capable of carrying up to 150 metric tons to Earth orbit, reusable, and up to 250 metric tons disposable. How many Starship pilots should there be? Well, this is significant for several reasons including that each individual will require crucial resources such as food and water. If we know that the maximum load capacity of a Starship is 100 metric tons, we need to know that the actual mass of a crew member and we also know that the crew's mental health and well-being are vital. Is has played a significant role in these long-duration interplanetary expeditions. Crew members may begin to worry if too many people are on board and need more personal space, and they may reach halfway to Mars. However, if there aren't enough crew members, individuals might become bored with each other, with most experts believing that a crew of 10 is the optimal spot for a Starship expedition to Mars, we may see the first violent crime committed on Earth very soon. Elon Musk has mentioned sending 100 people at once, but all signals go this route. The present spaceship is 50 meters long and tapers down to a point at the nose. Satellites are used by the Starship. Starship is intended to transport satellites over greater distances at a lower marginal cost per launch than our existing Falcon spacecraft. Starship with a payload compartment bigger than any fairing now in the service or construction, opens the door to new missions, including space telescopes larger than the James Webb. Raptor engines that can be increased to nine by the first crewed voyage to Mars, three sea level engines for the landing burn, six vacuum engines for pushing from low orbit Earth and enough propellants to set the course for the stars above. That occurs and the area is going to be closed by something called a typical dome, where the cargo and crew section begins. We estimate that the length of this top section will be around 17 meters, which will be the highest height, with more wheel tacks dispersed at each level. Based on that, dividing it into six vertical levels implies higher ceilings in the cargo bay, and floor-to-ceiling in the cruising portion should be roughly two and a half meters down or low enough to float comfortably without banging your head. Given that this spacecraft will have to make a vertical landing on Mars, it makes it logical to maintain its center of gravity as low as possible. Hence, we anticipate cargo compartments on the first level. At 7.5 kilometers per second, the Starship will reach Mars' atmosphere. The spacecraft's heat shield is meant to sustain numerous incursions. Still considering how hot the vehicle is entering Mars' atmosphere, we expect some heat shield ablation similar to wear and tear on a brake pad. The engineering video below models the physics of Starship's Mars arrival. When these people get on Mars, they will require resources and infrastructure such as rovers and robots, among other things, to sustain their existence. Therefore, we evaluate the whole life support system of a spacecraft with a power generator and a ground elevator spacecraft. On level 2, they'll have a strategy to move in and out where they'll keep food and materials needed to cultivate modest amounts of fresh vegetables such as leafy greens. On level 3, we have a hydroponic garden of some kind and a gym and restroom facilities. Physical conditioning is essential for long-term stays in microgravity for astronauts all over the world. The space station requires several hours of exercise daily, including a combination of cardio and resistance training. The strap-down treadmill has long been a fixture aboard the ISS. Starship has a solar panel module built in space and is attached to the ship after refueling in orbit. Also, the further away you are from the sun, the less efficient those solar panels are at generating electricity, so they may need to be made even more significant than what happens. When you go to Mars, you can use that and can't get off all 
because there's a little dirty idea number two, it's the battery Elon Musk is also the owner of an electric vehicle company called Tesla. Not only that Tesla has an advanced battery pack that they use in their vehicles, but they have that too. Power walls. The storage products are called power walls. Each power wall packs 13 kilowatt hours of energy and can power an average home daily with a list of these battery packs that ship a smaller, more manageable solar array. Over a month, the walls of power on Mars should be slowly recharged using giant solar arrays on the ground and prepared for the return trip. Colonizing Mars is not a piece of cake. The downside here is that the batteries are extra heavy, each unit at about 250 pounds, so the amount of usable cargo capacity in the ship quickly grows and wears away way which makes colonizing Mars a bit more complicated. It will be difficult for high hydrogen fuel cells to be a strong candidate. They convert hydrogen gas into electricity and produce water as a byproduct, killing two birds with one stone. And hydrogen is the lightest element in the known universe, so that is a bonus. Well, we've already figured out how to power a car with a hydrogen fuel cell, so it's certainly possible that we could be scaled up to a spaceship. The crew will fly from Kennedy Space Center in Florida to the lunar surface in private rooms where they can communicate with their loved ones, pursue their hobbies or work on projects for the mission, and relax and sleep for comfort and ease for use for the lunar astronauts. Every person can customize their private room before the rocket launches. More than 1 million people in 249 countries and regions worldwide applied to fly on Starship as part of the Dearborn mission. This flight is essential to enable access for people who dream of traveling to space. Safe and affordable transportation, sustaining long-term human exploration on the moon will require the safe and affordable transportation of crew and significant amounts of cargo. NASA announced it had modified its contract with SpaceX to develop the Starship human landing system further. Initially, selected to create a lunar landing capable of carrying astronauts between lunar orbit and the surface of the moon as part of NASA's Artemis 3 mission, marking humanity's first return to the moon since the Apollo program's final mission in 1972. SpaceX will now support a second human landing demonstration as part of NASA's Artemis 4 mission. Additionally, SpaceX will demonstrate Starship's capability to dock with Gateway, a small space station that will orbit the moon in efforts to support lunar and deep space exploration, accommodate four crew members, and deliver more supplies, equipment, and science payloads that are needed for extensive surface exploration. SpaceX's Starship spacecraft and Super Heavy rocket represent an integrated and fully reusable launch, propellant delivery, rendezvous, and planetary lander system with robust capabilities and safety features uniquely designed to deliver these essential building blocks. We're honored to be a part of NASA's Artemis program to help return humanity to the moon and usher in a new era of human space exploration. In its fully reusable configuration, Starship is planned to have a payload capacity of 100 tons, 220,000 pounds, to low Earth orbit and is designed to be flown multiple times to spread out the cost of the spacecraft. The spacecraft is planned to be refuelable in orbit before traveling to destinations that require more velocity changes, Delta V budget, such as the Moon and Mars. Proposed applications for Starship include regular, crewed, and cargo launches, building the Starlink Internet constellation, and performing sub orbital point-to-point -point flights on Earth. Starship is designed to be a fully reusable orbital rocket to reduce launch costs and maintenance between flights. Elon Musk says there may be both expandable and reusable versions of Starship. The bodies of both rocket stages are made from stainless steel giving Starship its strength for atmospheric entry. The rocket's reusability in stainless steel construction has influenced missiles such as the Terran and Project Jarvis. Stacked and fueled, Starship is about 5,000 T, 11 million pounds by mass, B, 9 meters, 30 feet wide, and 120 meters, 
390 feet high. The engine structure is mostly aluminum, copper, and steel oxidizer side turbo pumps and manifolds subject to corrosive oxygen-rich flames are made of an icono-like SX500 super alloy. Raptor's main combustion chamber can contain 300 bar, 4400 psi of pressure, the highest of all rocket engines. A few parts are 3D printed and the Raptor's gimbaling or rotation range is 15 degrees higher than the RS-25's 12.5 degrees and the Merlin's 5 degrees. In mass production, SpaceX aims to produce each engine at a cost of $250,000. Starship has a total propellant capacity of 1,200 tons across main and header tanks. The header tanks are better insulated due to their position and are reserved for use to flip and land the spacecraft following re-entry. About 130 liters of hydraulic fluid is used for the spacecraft's operations. At the aft end of the Starship spacecraft are six Raptor engines, three designed to operate in the lower atmosphere and three Raptor vacuum engines designed for vacuum. A set of reaction control thrusters mounted on the exterior control altitude while in space. The spacecraft has four body flaps to control the spacecraft's orientation and help dissipate energy during atmospheric entry, composed of two forward flaps and two aft flaps. Under the forward flaps, hard points are used for lifting and catching the spacecraft via mechanical arms. The flaps hinges are sealed with metal because they would be easily damaged during re-entry. For satellite launches, Starship will have a large cargo door open to release payloads and close upon entry instead of a more conventional jettisonable nose cone fairing. Instead of a clean room, payloads are integrated directly into Starship's payload bay, which necessitates purging the payload bay with temperature-controlled ISO Class 8 clean air. Crewed Starship vehicles will replace the cargo bay with a pressurized crew section and have a life support system. For long-duration missions, such as crewed flights to Mars, SpaceX describes the interior as potentially including private cabins, large communal areas, centralized storage, solar storm shelters, and a viewing gallery. Starship's life support system is expected to recycle resources such as air and water from waste. Would you consider living inside the SpaceX Starship? Let us know in the comments. And this is all for today's video. Make sure you hit that bell icon for upcoming videos. And if you've enjoyed this video, please do leave a like and subscribe. And thanks for watching.